Hello there and welcome back to Prime Morning. We are live on Joy Prime Television. It's a Tuesday. It's time for Good Living. Today we are wrapping up the show with Good Living. And uh, I've got Mr. Ebenezer Atta. It's good to have you in the studio. Uh, first aid instructor. Today we are talking about first aid in emergency situations. Okay. I mean, we need first aid every day, anytime, everywhere. But today we'll focus on emergency situations. Um, this is a part two of our conversation. Yeah. Uh, uh, nearly... A little over one month yes yeah we we started with first aid yeah. we touched on a few things what you should have in your first aid box at home in the office in your car we even went a little uh, further to talk about the CPR yeah how to help somebody so was today let's start with the children okay okay so if you have a child all right, you can join in the conversation. You can send us a WhatsApp. We'll open the phone lines at some point if we have time. But if you have a child, let's say, what do you call it in first aid? Infant, infant, drop. infant. Yes. Okay. So we have um, age categories. Okay. So zero to one years, an infant, and then one to seven years is a child. Eight years and above, we regard them as adults. Ah. Oh. Because you can have an eight-year-old child bigger than I am. Okay. Yes. So that's our categories in first aid. Okay. Just in first aid. That's okay. how we categorize it. So this one is an infant? Yes, it's an infant. Okay, is this a boy or a girl? <laughs> I think it's a boy. Okay. All right. So um, if, a, if, a, if, if a child is choking on water or food, what can I do? Okay. Let me do this correction. Um, choking, we say, is an obstruction of the airway by solid objects. So water, we don't say water ah. chokes. Okay, so water right. drowns. So you think you if you're drinking? Yes, it could drown you. When wow. it displaces the food, it goes into the airway. It okay. could drown you. Sometimes it comes out of your nose. Water. Wow. You've not experienced so it's not just, it. It's not just going into, into the... water, immersing yourself into water. That's not just that, but even drinking water, you could drown. Okay. So Thank the you. choking is when a solid object obstructs your airway. Okay. Then we call it choking. Okay. Yes. Okay. And I kids, it's, it's so common. Mm -hmm. Yes, in infants and in children. It could be even the food they are being fed on. It could be a piece of granite because the airway is so tiny. It could be um, the most common thing kids choke on is a coin. coin. Coin, money. When you check from the statistics from the children's hospital, lots of kids come with, with choking, being coin choked up in the throat. And sometimes if you don't manage it quick, it will stop, they will stop breathing and then the next thing is are gone. Wow. Because if you don't have breath within three to six minutes, that's the end of you. You're gone. Yes. Oh, within three to six, six minutes. Six minutes. If you don't have oxygen in your body, mixing up with the blood, going into the brain, that's, that's the it. end. I see. Okay. And so can a, an infant drown on breast milk? Do they drown or choke? So it's, it's, it's water. water. I, I would call it drowning. But everybody calls it choking. But the right thing should be drowning because it's liquid. Okay. Yes. Okay. Shall I hand over my child? Yes. Right now? This is the baby. This is a baby, an infant. Yes. So this is my baby, and it's very common. I had an instance where someone had the. I think the child was three years. Choked on the coin. Quickly rushed the child to the hospital, and then she said the nurse took the hospital. Within about five minutes, the nurse came back. The child was fine, and then took about three hundred CDs, and then, and I thought, oh, mommy, let's save some money. Yeah, let's save you could. Some you could have money. done this at <laughs> home. Okay. So. When kids start starts, um, choking, sometimes it's quite difficult for you to see. With okay. adults, we'll cling on to our legs and you see our eyes popping out and all. But with kids, they might either start coughing, like, <coughs> as if they are struggling. And sometimes they'll start crying. Okay. Okay. So in choking, we have two management. We have the abdominal thrust and the back slap. So abdominal thrust and then TR. Um, no, T H R S U T. So not T R U S T. T H R U S T. Trust. Oh, what's my pen? Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So we have the back slap. I'll give you a personal experience. I went to the mall to watch movie. My son was then about seven months. So you know the room, movie room is dark. Yes. So his mom was taking in popcorn. Not knowing this little one has picked the popcorn and then placed it in his mouth. We didn't know. Oh, so he started crying. Yeah, he started crying and I took him out. So sometimes I'd shake him up and he'd start laughing. But this time around, he was serious with his <laughs> crying. Hmm. So I checked and I realized it was about 12 a.m. Where wow. am I going to rush him to the hospital? I realized there were some bits of popcorn around his mouth. I opened and there was the popcorn far beneath. Wow. 
So I did my back slap. So I'm going to demonstrate it. So I held this man this way. Not for him to fall. I placed my hand in between his legs. Held his chin this way. I can't ask my baby to open up your, his airway. He's too small. I can't say, knee, open your airway. And then I would have to open the airway myself this way. So I held him this way. Open the airway. And then I bring him down this way. His head lower than his body. Okay. And then I gave him my back slap, the upper part of his back. So I gave him, <coughs> one, don't be scared. So airway still open, bend down, one, two, the popcorn came out. He started crying again. So imagine if I didn't have these skills, it would have been worse and I would have to rush him to the nearest hospital. At 12 a.m., I think I would, it wouldn't take me less than 10 minutes to get to um, how do you call it? 37 because I was at Kramo. I was at that Kramo. So that's how you do it. So even if it's a queen, we do the back slap. Okay. So I'm saying, so this is the back slap demonstration. Then we have the abdominal thrust. Okay. So this is a baby. I'll show you both sides. So I can hold the baby this way. Mm -hmm. Place my hand, if you could see it. I make a fist, uh -huh. put my thumb in the fist and hold the fist. Put it in this way. Push in and up. Is any of these, is, is it painful? Yeah, um, wow. I would say it, 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 it's painful because when you try it on an adult, it's quite painful. But what we are trying to do is to force air out of the stomach for it to come through the esophagus for you to bring out the thing. Okay. okay. So push one. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the first trick. So this is it. Not his stomach. The abdomen. In between his, his chest bone and his stomach. Okay. In between as well. So that's right? the upper one. Yes. Okay. Upper part. So you get it. The next thing I can do is also do my normal chest thrust. Put the baby down this way. Airway open. Two fingers because it's a baby. Okay. I'm not going to use so much force because the chest is fragile. It could break. So how many? Five. We do five back slap and then five abdominal thrust. Okay. Okay. So for the for the popcorn baby, you yes. did five. I I just is just it? two and it oh, came out. Okay. So but does this require thing, some experience or skill? Or yes, I think you need a bit of training. Okay. But it's better to do something than to do nothing. True. But if you are not trained, you could make the situation worse. Okay. But somebody, the minimum at least is somebody, five yes, times. Somebody might open, see the popcorn, try to put in your finger to bring it out. Start pushing the back. You okay. worsen the situation. Okay. Okay. So five back slaps, but I did just two. So in case, because it's five, even if it's out, you have to complete your five. You don't do that. But how, how do you know how many popcorns or how many coins the child swallowed? Swallowed, yeah. no, because he started crying. He started crying louder than he used to okay. when he swallowed the thing because okay. it was obstructing his airway. Okay. So when I finished, I opened and then rechecked. I realized I could see nothing. Okay. Yes. And he would stop crying yes. at that point? Too. Yes. After a while, he stopped crying. Okay. Okay. So five back slaps. One, two, three, four, five, ten. If you don't know how to do this, just do your abdominal thrust. Yeah. Okay. So how many? Abdominal thrust in between the two nipples. This mm -hmm. time, not down. In between the two nipples. Mm -hmm. Here. With two fingers? Yes, five abdominal thrust. One, two, three, four, five. That's the same way you do CPR for babies. Okay. Oh, you, might, you might want to continue with the CPR for babies. And at what point do you do CPR for a baby? Okay, when the baby stops breathing. It's possible babies can stop breathing. Babies don't have bad conditions like adults. Adults, our hearts can stop and all. What causes most of them to stop breathing is respiratory arrest. And what's that? The respiratory system might narrow. They might not get enough air going through and they'll stop breathing. Is this common with babies? Anything could happen. It could be allergic reactions. It could be medications. Anything could happen to them. Okay. 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 And so, so if your child has it's got that this challenge. Issue. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to perform CPR for a baby, unlike an adult, you just have to go straight ABC, airway breathing compression, right? Okay. You check the airway first. The same way, baby. But with babies, you don't start your compression. Remind me again, how do you check the airway? Head tilt, chin lift. Oh, so the airway. My, yes. Yeah, no waves. Airway. Airway, not airways. Yeah. When you say airways, then... It's all quite important. Yeah. yeah. So my palm on his forehead, my fingers on his chin. So I'm going to do head tilt, chin lift. 
I'm going to tilt the head and lift the chin. So this way. Okay. And then I bring my ears closer. I'm going to do what I say. Look, listen, and feel. Look at his chest if it's rising and falling. Feel with my cheeks and listen with my ears if there's any wheezing sound. Okay. So this for at least 10 seconds. So I do this. So I don't do this. You realize it because I want to look at his chest. Okay. So this for at least 10 seconds. Okay. So I realize he's not breathing. Then because there's an infant, I would have to give him five initial breaths before I start my chest compression. You see the difference? Five initial, initial breaths. Initial breath. Yes. Okay. And the breath is how you do it. Airway open. Cover nose and mouth of infant with your mouth. Because nose and, and mouth. mouth of infant with your mouth. An adult, pinch nose and then cover mouth to mouth. Okay. Baby or infant, open airway. Cover nose and mouth of infant with your mouth because it's so close. Okay. So both places covered. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then you don't blow air like an adult because the lungs are weak. By the time you end up, you finish blowing your air, you tear up all the lungs in the baby. Wow. So you puff. Five times before you start. And you'll be surprised that airway open, just puffing air. Even the third or fourth time, the baby will start crying or okay. the baby will respond. Because I'm saying most of the issues that would cause them to stop breathing is respiratory arrest, not cardiac. Okay. 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 So five initial breaths. Always when you want to give any casualty breath, make sure airway is opened. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want to block both nose and mouth because you don't want the air to escape. Because you can breathe through your mouth and your nose. If I, I, I don't block your nose and I blow air through your mouth, it comes out of your nose. I'm not achieving anything. But I want the air to go down into your lungs, mix up with the blood in the heart, and then try to feed the brain. The brain. Yes. Okay. So this way, one, I take out my mouth. You don't, you don't keep it there. You don't do that. Okay. So airway open. Five. Mm. Then I come to my chest compression. How many chest compression, if you could remind me? The last Five. No, chest compressions for CPR. Yeah, forgotten. 30. 30 yeah. for a child too? Yes. You go for 30. You remember an so adult? An adult is 30. We do this yeah. because we want more energy. But with the child, this, two. I'm um, sorry, 30. So one, two, three, four. You always do a CPR on a hard, flat surface. Okay. Not so on hard, bed. flat, not on the soft bed. That What happens is when you press the, the, the casualty bends, you are not achieving it. Okay. Your CPR, what it does is you become, you the first aider has become a manual heart pump for the casualty. Okay. Because the pacemaker is not working anymore. Sorry, I'm using the stems. <laughs> what makes your heart beat is I a pacemaker. I understand. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not working anymore. So when you compress, if I could get something to demonstrate it. Let me see if I could. You don't worry. You want a hard surface or what? Th that's fine. Imagine there's something in between my, my mm -hmm. palm. So this is my chest bone. That's my backbone. Okay and the heart is in between. So when I compress, it forces the little blood in the blood, in, in the heart, to pump out to vital body organs, especially the brain. If the brain is not dead, it could be revived at the hospital. So what CPR does is, is to feed vital body organs constantly with oxygen mixed blood. Okay. So we call it oxygenated blood. So by the time you get to the hospital, most of the vital body organs, especially the brain, it's still alive, although the person is unresponsive. Mm. There are times you start your CPR, even your first 10 compressions, the person coughs. Okay. You don't say, during our training, it was 30, so MFI, you just lie down, let me finish the 20. <laughs> people do that. That's, I'm sorry, but that's hilarious. People, people do that. Okay, so the difference is that for a CPR for a baby, it's still 30. 30, but two but, fingers. But two fingers. Yes. And also, if, you, if, a, if an infant is choking on a solid you know, yes. food or coin yeah. or anything, that's five. Yes, five. five. That's yes. the difference, yes. okay? Yeah. Okay. So 30 chest compressions, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. And you don't stop CPR until you hand over to a medical personnel. Okay. You don't do, CPR is exhausting. Okay. Yeah, I did CPR for someone and I was almost the, the second victim. Wow.
Okay, uh, you can join in the conversation 0302 or 94. Well, at this point, would you say the child has fainted? What's fainting? Oh, fainting is a brief loss of consciousness. Okay, and okay. when a person, when, when a child also faints, would you go through the no. same? No, when uh -huh. someone faints, you don't do CPR. Okay. What happens is when Before you... Before you move out, are we, are we at least, have yes. we exhausted the, um, the CPR I, for I, a baby? I'd wonder to do the CPR for a child as well. Okay. okay. Is it very different from the infant and the child? Yes, the, it's, okay. it's quite different. Please for the on. child, let's assume there's a child. Let me put this here. Or you can keep your baby. Yeah, thank you. I don't know which of this is this Jay or Ben. So sure. let's assume there's a child. Mm -hmm. For the child, I'm going to use just one hand. Okay. Instead of double. Double. So okay. the same place for the child. The child is also not. In this part. Yes, the heel of my palm. We we call it the heel of your palm. Okay. So not the palm itself. Use the, the heel side. of your palm, palm here. Yeah, here. Yeah. Right. So in between the nipples. So I'm going to press down and hard. You should press at least five centimeters yeah. deep. About one third of the body size. So the bigger you are, the harder we press. Okay. Because it's, it should go, when you are so big, there's so much fatty tissues around your chest. If I don't press hard, I'm not achieving anything. So the bigger you are, the harder I compress. And the deeper I should go. Okay. So at least five centimeters deep. Okay. At least one third of the body size. Okay. So this way, so I start compressing the same 30. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. When I'm done with my 30 chest compressions, had it not been COVID, we would have just gone this way, open airway, mm -hmm. pinch nose, and give two rescue breaths. So for the child, yes. you'd have to pinch the nose. Yes. It's only an infant, that you'd, you'd have, have to cover to, both. Yes. The, you have to cover the nose Send and the, the mouth. mouth for the child, you pinch, pinch the, the nose, nose and then, yes. okay. So two rescue breaths, airway open, <laughs> you release, you go for the next one. Ah, is this how we do the, yes. you blow... You blow air, you release. You blow air. You, you don't want any air to escape. Okay. So you cover the entire place. If if I do this to the dummy, the chest will rise, if you want me to do that. It will rise? Yes. So airway open. Please, can you say it clearly? Yes. Okay. And I release. Right. Sure. Okay. Let's go to Swedro and talk to Godfred. Hi. Good morning, Godfred. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, please go on. Uh, um, Kofra, so kindly listen to us on the phone, not on the television. Okay. All right. You can call us 0302 or 94. Yeah. So just a recap quickly. The heel of your palm. Heel of your palm. Child. That's it, just compression. Yes. And yes. For the, you have to also pinch the nose. Airway open. And two rescue breaths. Yes, two for rescue breaths. For the, for the infant as well. Two as rescue two. breaths. And for the yes. adults. Two rescue two. breaths. Okay. Okay. I, I can't wait to go into fainting because we see a lot of fainting. Okay. Fainting is. I'm saying fainting is just a brief loss of consciousness. Mm. Uh, it's, it's, I would say it's not life threatening. Give me a moment, Eben. So if a child is drowning, I mean, not that the baby or the child went swimming. Yeah. That, is it, does it any different from how you'd do the yeah. slab and all of that? You still do your normal slab. You do the yeah. normal slabbing yeah. and okay. Yeah. Nearly the same process yes. and the water will come out. Yeah. Okay. CPR right, is then. done when there's no breath and no pulse. So any condition that would cause you not to have breath and pulse, the pulse is the rate of your heartbeat. Give me a moment. Okay. Let's go to Wale Wale. Let's talk to Samira. Hi, Samira. Yeah, hello, Emma. Fan. Good morning. Good morning. Your call has been put on oh, hold. Please wait. So sorry. Your call has been put on hold. Please so wait. So sorry, Samira. I'll hold on till you come back, okay? All right, let's continue. Okay, so I'm saying the pulse is the rate of your heartbeat. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have pulse, you don't have breath, then we'd have to do CPR. CPR simply means cardio pulmonary resuscitation. Yeah, you taught me. Yes. I'm almost a terrible student today. Okay. Cardio has to do with your heart. Pulmonary has to do with your lungs, and then resuscitation has to do with you trying to revive something. Okay. So, a typical example is cardiac arrest. It will cause you not to have breath and pulse. And you also do CPR when the, the, there's difficulty in breathing. You see somebody panting, <laughs> somebody will be doing <coughs> it's, it's common with people with cardiac arrest. 
If a person has asthma, do you do that? Asthma can cause you not to have breath and pulse. Mm. But if you are able to manage your asthma quick, it will move into no breath, okay. no pulse. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Makes sense. So what were we discussing? Well, we're moving you? to fainting. You're trying to okay. let me understand the so difference between fainting. So fainting is a brief loss of consciousness. Mm. The most common cause of fainting is hunger. Hunger? Yeah. A calm? Yes. Hunger, fatigue, mm. severe pain. Even if you are overexcited, you can faint. <laughs> if you are very, f um, if you see something that is so fearful, you can faint. Oh, yes. Yes. So it's just a brief loss of consciousness. When people faint, they still breathe. So we say unconsciousness with breath. And there's unconsciousness without breath. Mm -hmm. So fainting is unconsciousness with, with breath. breath. So okay. somebody faints and you try open airway, check for breath, you realize they are still breathing, but or they are unresponsive. So fainting, what we have to do is just elevate the legs. It's, it's very simple. Elevate the two legs. Yes, elevate his legs. Make sure um, like there's, yes, the baby has legs. <laughs> it's so simple. What happens is you need enough oxygenated blood in your brain. And the body has been designed in a way that when you see something that is scary, the pressures, blood pressures will drop and you will not be having enough into your brain. That's what we'll cause, well, that is what will cause fainting. Severe heat can also cause fainting. Yes. Um, when you get circulation impediment, you could also get um, fainting. That's why you see lots of kids or soldiers on parades fainting. Because they stand at a particular place at a peak circulation, because of gravity, the blood comes down, it finds it difficult to go to back climb up. up. Okay. That's why you have to move your limbs. So by the time you realize they're falling. Mm. And when they fall, within a few minutes, they're up again. You go, when you fall, everything in your body quickly rushes to the upper part, and then you'll be fine. Sure. Let's go to um, Asin Fosu and talk to Constance. Hello, Constance. Good morning. Hello. Right. Thank you for calling us. Please go on. Please, um, I heard him saying that for the chest compression, for child is um, 30 times. Mm -hmm. But I was being told that for child, the chest compression is 15 times. So I'm a little bit confused. Okay. At what point and where were you thought the 15? Hi, Constant. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. All right, so, let's talk to Francis. We'll come back uh, okay. to address concerns. Hello, Francis. Hello, madam. Good morning. Good morning, madam. Right. Please go on. Okay. We <sighs> Not on the television. Listen to us on the phone. Okay. Let's go. Okay, Why well, the a question be, mm -hmm, she asked, 15, 15 compressions, um, I will just inform her that there are, there's been changes in first aid since we started. Okay. First aid is dynamic. It keeps changing. There's, there's European Research Station Commission. There are so many things, best practices, they take some out, they bring. So formally, we used to do 15. Now it's 30 okay. compressions. Okay. There's been so many changes, so many. This is not to say that if you get to the 15th one, then the baby is up. You, you still have to continue yes, to 30, 30 anyway. Yes, yes. Okay. So I think that's why you always need to have a retraining of your first aid. Okay. So you do the first aid training. I think the certificate expires in two years. You come for a retraining or a refresher course because there might be so many things that have changed, but you'll be practicing the old one. Too. Okay. Okay. So not to say the old one won't work, but the new ones work faster. Okay, that's a nice way. Yeah. All right, let's continue with the fainting. Constance, I hope that you're updated now. Okay. Right, so... So elevate. I'm just going to elevate his legs. So if it's if as an adult, I might get something, probably your chair, elevate the legs, put mm. the legs there, mm. and then just find this casualty. Within five to six minutes, he'll be fine. Because if you're lying down, you get blood into your brain, fine. But it won't be as fast as raising your... Your lower legs. limbs, yes, okay. your legs, okay. which will make it faster. How long can a person's legs be raised before they start to even uh, talk or wake yeah, up? That's them. what I'm saying. Within, um, let's say, within four to six minutes, this casualty should be fine. Okay. So you realize sometimes the soldiers or the school kids faint. After a while, they are revived. Some would want to come back to the parade because it's not life threatening. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the Volta region and talk to Mavis. Hi, Mavis. Hello, Mavis. 
Yeah, hello. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, MFA. Thank you for calling I want us. To ask the doctor a question. Yes. Uh, I have a baby who is four years old. Okay. When I gave birth to her, she was okay. She was normal. But after three years, I realized when she she has a problem, she starts coughing, that she will lose her breath. She will be she will be breathing as if she's an asthmatic. We've been to hospital several times. When we go, they will tell us it's a uh, infection, infection. And then when she is breathing, she will hear a sound, a woozy sound coming out of the breathing. Hmm. And at times we have to go under oxygen. So initially I thought she's asthmatic. We check, we did all sorts of tests, but they say she's not asthmatic, she's not pneumonia. So I want to find out from doc doctor what could be the cause. Because hmm. they will tell us infection. When they give us medicine, she will take the medicine after two weeks. Oh, a month, the condition comes back again. Okay. Unfortunately, Ben is not a doctor. Yes, He's I'm just, just a first aid instructor. Yeah. But I, I mean, this would be an advice. I think that you should change the hospital first. Uh, maybe you should go to a specialist hospital and then have a second opinion and even a third one before you conclude on exactly. Because the symptoms you're sharing are quite uh, serious. And so you should pay attention to it. Okay. Uh, let's talk to Benedicta from La. Hi, Benedicta. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for calling. Okay. Um, I have a baby. Uh, she's four months old. She has been choking on breast milk. Wow. She's been drowning on breast milk. Yes, drowning okay. on breast milk. Okay. Um, you might want to just... So, um, how do you manage it? I just hold her head upright and then you wait for a while, then she stops. Mm. She stops. Then I think that's... that's the the pressure from the breast is too much for her. I think mm. I think you are expelling so much and she's not swallowing so fast. Okay. Yes. But but anyway, please speak to your midwife and your pediatrician as well. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, let's talk to Rashid from Kumas. Hi Rashid, good morning. Good morning. Hi. Uh my wife is complaining bitterly that she can hardly smell something. And she is having cold too. Mm. Okay. This one, we can't give first aid. Hospital. This one, we want you to take her to the hospital so that she get a few tests done. Okay. Rashid. Sorry. Okay. Um, so, I know that in this case, are we done with the I think fainting is a bit yeah. straightforward. And and I, I'd also want to get... Um, Choking for an adult. Choking for an yes. adult. Oh. I want us to demonstrate it. Okay. Is it that serious? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. People, on. people, people choke, and that will be the end of their life. Okay. You've not seen one before. I don't hope to see one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Even okay. please go on. So if I could get someone to demonstrate with. Where's Kobe? Kobe, come, come choking on something. So Find something to choke yourself on. Your first aid should always end at the hospital. You don't just treat it and then leave it like that. Okay. So your first aid, you realize our definition before okay. sending the casualty to the nearest clinic. Okay, this is not to say that after everything you're done, you leave uh, the patient at home. You should still go to the so hospital. So this is Kobe. Yes, so this is Kobe. Normally when you, you have adults choking, you realize they hold on to their necks. They cling it. Uh, I think... There's something holding on, and then you realize sometimes eyes are popping out and all. So this is what you do. This this is Kobe. So mm. I'm going to do my first um, five back slaps or back blows before I do my abdominal thrust. Boss, you chop? <laughs> no, no. Okay. Because if I do it so hard, he could vomit. All oh, right. Yes. And don't you dare, Kobe. <laughs> so I'm going to stand in between his legs this way. Please okay. come here. Go that way. Sometimes the, the, the person you are trying to manage is huge. So okay. don't stand fully behind the, pe the cash out to this way. If he's falling, he might go with you and you become the second victim. Okay. So I stand this way. I put it, my legs in between. I bend him down this way. I put my palm on his belly. And I'm going to hit his two shoulder blades in between. Mm. So I'm going to hit with the heel of my palm. So one. But firmly, if he's choking, I'm not going to do this as if I must. I'm going to hit him firmly. So, um, one, two, five times. Okay. If it's not coming out, I make the same way. I make a fist, put my thumb in the fist, in between the chest and the belly. Then I go in, push 
in and up. In and up. So it's good. That's why you see people choking and they go up. Yeah. You see. Okay. So you are going to push in and up. So one, two, five times. But oh. normally, this one works. The moment you do this, if you yeah. are yes, imagine me doing this to, let's say a five-year-old child. He vomits the choke, whatever is choking, and vomits what he ate last week as well. Uh, Kobe, go before <laughs> you vomit. Thank you. All right. Thank so you. that's how. That's how you manage choking for an adult. I don't know why my time keeps running, eh, Ben. Quickly, I know that this country, there's high rate of uh, people catching stroke and all of that. Yeah. I want you to touch on it quickly. If you suspect and see somebody having a stroke, okay, so quickly. We do the fast test. What's Fish, that? We call it the fast test. Okay. Facial um, speech and time. Okay. So facial. So if you are able to recognize these signs, you could quickly raise the casualty to the hospital and it could be reversed or the, the time to recover would be less than okay. any. So sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it hits instantly. Sometimes it takes time. You realize I'll be there with someone and then the mouth will start or the face will start drooling. We call mm -hmm. it drooping or yes. And then Ubo will say part of the face at here and the mouth is also doing, going this way. Mm. But the person is normal moving about and talking. Okay. So this is a sign, it's, 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 it's a very common sign of stroke. So face, sometimes it hits, they are okay, but you realize face is dropping, mouth is dropping, and then the arm is weak. That's why you do face um, speech. You ask them a question, what's your name? Unfortunately, fortunately, okay. maybe there'll be a part three yes, again. Yes. Thank you so much, Eben, at all. And uh, today is Tuesday, so you definitely can get pizza at Cheesy Pizza, all of the branches. Uh, buy one, get one free, I think. Or, at a, uh, yeah, it's buy one, get one free Tuesday. So get one and send me a slice, maybe. Take care of yourself. My name is MFA Akosia Adeti. I promise to pick up this conversation again. It's a long and a deep one, so don't worry if we don't talk about what you want to hear. We'll talk about it again. Mr. Eben. Ebenezer Atto, thank you so much. First aid thank instructor. You. This has been Prime Morning. Uh, Benjamin was here and Jay was here as well. Take care. We'll see you tomorrow.